So some pointers about the executive summary to come with the culminating activity. Um, so just a caution that it's not really uh, an introduction, it's not a conclusion, it's going to summarize um, all the key points. Uh, so it um, should have many of the same items and the same content as your um, sales pitch itself. So if you haven't written one of these before, they would go on the front of a report or um, a business plan. Or in this case, you are making a recommendation about what to invest, uh, what country to invest in, and why it's a good fit. So you're going to put this on the, the front of your video, so to speak, uh, so that you can give everyone the key concept without um, all the details. So um, it should be, uh, should have all the key points. If there's an important piece of information in your sales pitch, it should be in your executive summary, but you're not gonna go into the same minutia, or the same facts and figures. But if there's an important point in your sales pitch, it should be in the executive summary. Uh, you know, sometimes we talk about the elevator pitch, like what would you do if uh, Bill Gates came into the elevator with you and you were an app developer while well, you would have a few seconds you'd have 30 seconds a minute to, until you got to the appropriate floor so how would you introduce yourself and your idea and this is kind of like your way of introducing your sales pitch to uh, someone else to the teacher and so it uh, it's going to be very very succinct and to the point and the idea is you know when um people are launching their business and they may uh, they create their business plans that they are handing those out to different VCs and different investors and uh, those people are really busy they don't have time to read every single business plan they're going to read the executive summaries and see whether it's worth reading the rest so again nothing should be left out if it's important or if you're doing a report at work you again your boss may not have time to read the whole report so they have to read the uh you know it should be something interesting uh, to the point uh, you know the again covers all the information because it's for people who um it's a skill to have in business for people you know these people are really really busy they don't have time to read the whole thing and they're reading these executive summaries to decide if they should read more and you know what are some characteristics that you would want to include in yours well um, um clearly state what the subject is what what are you talking about which country what what product what what company clearly state you know what it's about in a short you know very very to the point you know don't take a whole page say it in a paragraph or less why should someone continue reading why is your executive summary why is your sales pitch better than someone else why is this a you know a good decision so you know in this case you're um, evaluating a product and a company and where it should be expanded and so, you know, what is your decision? What do you recommend? And why do you make this recommendation? You know, that's the important part. Why, what is the reasoning beside your decision? And uh, let's conclude with an action step. What do you think would be the next thing that should be done? The first thing, you know, the first step as part of this international expansion. So uh, some errors that could occur. Um, writing it as an introduction or a conclusion, um, no. Um, you know, this is going to include pieces of your entire report. Uh, or, you know, you would just maybe um, repeat the exact executive summary at the uh, start of your sales pitch. No, no, no. This is the concise summary of all the important information that's in your sales pitch. Uh, sometimes you might write this before you've planned out the sales pitch. You don't have to record the sales pitch but uh, you know you should have an idea of what's going to go in there there's probably been some brainstorming you've laid out your cue cards about what should go into your sales pitch you've typed up some right rough notes and then you know therefore what should go in your executive summary it's not like you're going to do the summary first and then the sales pitch you're working on them together and at least you have an idea of what the sales pitch is going to look like by the time the summary is done you know, too much background information, like details about the country's population, 
you, you can say, for example, that the demographics are very, very suitable for this product. Um, and that's your point. You don't have to say every single statistic. You can say that the economy is very robust. You don't have to list every single characteristic of the economy. Uh, and you make it too long. It's really like the idea like is a, a two-sided sheet of paper. And if you put too much background information, it's preventing you from writing about your critical thinking and it adds that extra length that takes away from the short, uh, succinct nature of an executive summary. Uh, you know, using cliché terms or superlatives. Oh, this is the best idea ever. No. Why is it the best idea ever? How is this expansion plan going to happen? Don't just say, oh, yeah, this is an amazing idea. This is an amazing product. Oh, no. Explain what it is that makes it amazing. Why it is that you've made this decision that will be amazing. So don't, you know, just lay on the generalizations, the superlatives, some what terms you think should be said, you know, talk about, you know, the how and the why in a very, very concise form. So what uh, is recommended to be successful? Well, think of the following ideas. Put points in the same order in your sales pitch that they appear in the executive summary. That's why you might find it helpful to lay things out on a rough piece of paper or uh, some cue cards and then, you know, your someone could follow along and have the executive summary in front of them and watch your sales pitch and things will be, you know, sequenced correctly. It'll be a nice logical flow of, you know, hey, this is the company we're talking about. This is the market we're talking about. This is why it's going to work. This is how it's going to be done. And, you know, again, the, that order would appear in both of them. You know, you could um, to try to stand out a little bit, that there's going to be lots of these. So explain, you know, why, um, you know, if you're writing a business plan, why is your business plan going to be the successful, different business that the venture capitalist will want to invest in? You know, why is your sales pitch going to be the most interesting, the most comprehensive one that the teacher will listen to? You know, maybe you can start with an interesting factor figure to catch everyone's attention. You know, I'm not saying that formatting is what makes it stand out, but, you know, just start off with some, you know, some critical thinking, you know, an, an interesting idea, you know, you can uh, just something that makes yours a little bit different and a little bit personal, I think will help stand out among the crowd of over 100 executive summaries. And, you know, be uh, succinct. I've noticed that um, North Toronto students often don't write in paragraphs, and this is not a good trend for business. I think you should use paragraphs. People are looking in your business writing for headings. They're looking for paragraphs. They're looking for three to four, you know, ideas on a, on a website article that you would post on LinkedIn, that big blob of text that's got to go. Please use lists or headings. Organize things quickly and concisely so that it's easy to see. You know, the run-on sentences that go on and on, that's not necessary. You can state your point. I believe A because of B and, you know, a, a short sentence, you know, hey, state the conclusion, state some short evidence. You know, there's no need for these long sentences. There really shouldn't be more than two pages. So you have to be absolutely on point with your organization and your sentence structure. Um, it's a bit of a trend with venture capitalists these days to create pitch decks, which are kind of a little visual format. I don't recommend this for this high school project because often this comes to at a sacrifice of some detail and sacrifice of your thorough critical analysis, which is what we're looking for to see from a grade 12 student. So you might see this and, you know, if you are starting your own company, you might have a pitch deck to go with your business plan. And it's something to be aware of. You know, people do want to see things in a more visual way, an infographic or a slideshow. And pitch decks are becoming more popular. But please use an organized written executive summary that's short to the point uh, for this particular project and leave the uh, pitch deck for your entrepreneurship uh, class in university or your business leadership class. And hopefully these tips are helpful and allow you to succeed and do a great job.